Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Senator Shelley Mayer. I represent the 37th Senate District, and I'm here at the City Hall of New Rochelle, joined by colleagues from every level of government. Uh, we are gathering here today to make it clear that robust, local, community-driven news is so important to the people of Westchester, Rockland, and Long Island, and that 150 talented, thoughtful news people should not be the unwilling victims of a dispute. And at the end of the day, this is a moment for more news, not less news, in the communities we represent. And we're here today to suggest that Verizon has made a faulty decision in terminating its contract with RNN, and we urge them to reconsider and preserve quality local news coverage, a choice of coverage with competition for these critically important suburban communities that are represented here today. This is a time in America when more news coverage, more choices, more independent, thoughtful participation by our communities is absolutely essential. And we believe Verizon has made an error, and we are here today to say reconsider and think of the broader good. I'm very pleased to have with us such a broad group of representatives representing all sectors of our government the Majority Leader of the New York State Senate, Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins, our Westchester County Executive George Latimer, the Deputy Ken County Executive Ken Jenkins, New Rochelle Mayor Noam Bramson, who hosted us today, thank you so much, State Senator Pete Harcum from the 40th District, State Senator David Carlucci from the 38th District, representing Rockland and Westchester, State Senator Kevin Thomas from the 6th District from Long Island, from the Assembly, Assemblyman Nader Sage from the 90th District in Yonkers, Assemblyman Steve Otis, this is his district, Assemblyman Tom Abenanti from the River Towns, Assemblyman David Buckwald from White Plains and Points North, Westchester County Veterans Service Agency Director Ron Tochi from the County Legislator, Legislature Catherine Parker, Nancy Barr, Damon Marr, Jane Elkine Eney, the Deputy Supervisor of the Town of Mamaroneck, Port Chester Village Trustee Joan Grantois Thomas, and Yonkers Deputy Mayor Steve Levy, representing Yonkers Mayor Mike Spano. Thank you all for being here. Today we are very uh, dismayed to say that apparently Verizon has made an agreement to limit the choice of news coverage in our communities, communities that represent over 4 million people in the suburbs of New York City. We have depended on RNN's fair, thorough news coverage of the issues before these communities, and we are concerned that without independent choices, we will be left with a bare minimum of local TV news coverage. We have all worked closely with Altice and with News 12, and this is not a reflection of our comments about them. This is about the choice of having independent news coverage, choices of coverage for communities like ours. We are also deeply concerned about 150 talented news employees, from reporters to producers to technicians, who are left without jobs from this unwise decision. Today we are urging Verizon to rethink and reverse its decision, to think of the broader good, to understand the consequences of their decision are grave, and to acknowledge its civic responsibility and its responsibility to the communities it serves and go back to the negotiating table and reach an agreement. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my leader, my, my own leader, Majority Leader, Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins, uh, who will speak on behalf of the Senate, which wrote a letter urging Verizon to take a different tact. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Senator Mayor, and uh, thank you to, to all of my colleagues uh, for their leadership in this very critical issue. I think what Senator Mayer said uh, bears repeating. We are in a time where it matters what we do, and what's most important is it matters that people know what we do. And the way that's done is through journalism. The way that's done is through news. And the way we can get a diverse view of what is happening is through a diverse amount of voices. This is a sad day today. Today, we are being told by Verizon that they have decided to shut down the access to competition and more voices in the news. 
This is why we are here. We are dismayed. We are concerned. We are told that there will be a broader coverage. We are told that we will have colleagues who will have more uh, News 12 in parts of New York City. The reality is, is that New York City is not a market that is limited in terms of voices and coverage. It is in Long Island. It is in the Hudson Valley. It is represented by my colleagues here where we are saying that we need the variety of voices to cover what's happening here for our communities. We understand that democracy thrives when we have an informed population. That information comes from the news. And that is what compelled us. Uh, once we heard of the news in August, the Senate wrote a letter saying, please reconsider, go back to the table. There are people's lives at stake, their livelihoods rather at stake, and most importantly, the promise of a robust democracy because of civic engagement is at stake. It's no different now after we've received this letter. What we've been told, and again, as, as Senator Mayer said, this is not about News 12. We all are very you know, supportive of News 12. But we are more supportive of more democracy. We don't want to see the news dim. We don't want to see our opportunity to know what our neighbors are doing in Long Island and in the Hudson Valley limited in any way. So again, we ask that Verizon reconsider and, and just look at what you are doing to the community, to the community's news sources, to the economy, and to the, the, the employees, the dedicated employees who will be losing their jobs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to ask our County Executive, George Latimer. Thank you very much. I want to thank both Senator Mayer and Senator Stuart Cousins for organizing this, yeah. Mayor Bramson for hosting us here in New Rochelle. Um, on behalf of my colleagues in county government, the county legislators who were introduced a few minutes ago, uh, and as well my colleagues in other counties, I've spoken to County Executive Steve Ballone of Suffolk County, County Executive Laura Kern of Nassau County, County Executive Ed Day of Rockland County, and I know the sentiments that have been expressed by uh, Mark Molinaro, County Executive of Dutchess County, and others. Westchester County is about the same size and scope as Erie County. It's Erie County where Buffalo is the main city. And if you are in, in Buffalo and spending overnight and turn on television, the media outlets of the, of the metropolitan area focus on news from the county and the city in a county of a million people, Erie County, and a city of uh, 300,000 people, Buffalo, 400,000 people. Here in this area, Westchester County, and for that matter, at almost a million people, Suffolk County at a million four, and Nassau County at a million three, represent huge markets in and of themselves. With the exception that, we are under the banyan tree of New York City of eight to nine million people. And so when you turn on television every night, if you watch the 11 o'clock news, or if you buy any of the major circulation newspapers, the New York Times, the New York Post, the Daily News, you will see a concentration on what's happening primarily in the five boroughs of New York. That is where the majority of the population lives. But if you took New York City out of the metropolitan area, and your metropolitan area was Fairfield County, Westchester County, Nassau County, Suffolk County, and northern New Jersey, you'd have a metropolitan area that was, would be in the top ten of the nation. And it's that population that will suffer when you don't cover local news. And we would be standing here if this was about the journal news. We would be standing here if this was about any of the weekly print publications, any of those chains that exist, the Examiner and others that, that do a good job of covering local news. Because somebody has to cover Portchester. And New York Times, the Daily News, the New York Post won't do that. The major stations, 2, 4, 5, and 7, do a very good job of coming into Westchester County and Nassau County and Suffolk County when they can. But there's always more news in Brooklyn and in Queens and Manhattan. So we have to fight for the most extensive, diverse news coverage in Westchester and in Suffolk and in Nassau and in Fairfield and in Bergen and Passaic County. And I worked for a number of years for some U.S. Uh, some U.S. subsidiaries of major corporations. Corporate parent, Nestle, Vive, Switzerland. Corporate parent, ITT. And in those worlds, the decisions are made on dollars and cents. And those dollars and cents become the intrinsic, what is the value to the shareholder, what is the value as the Wall Street 
evaluators look at the stock value of the company. Except for one thing. The public media has to be judged on a different standard. It is a business. And Verizon has this opportunity, as does Altice and other major corporations. But we're seeing right now in America at large what happens if we don't have an active independent media reporting to the people of, of the United States of America, much less our local residents, exactly what has happened in a fair and balanced way, in an honest way, in a neutral way. Because American democracy pivots on a, on a free press. This news outlet and all the other news outlets have not always been complimentary about me and my colleagues in government. Anytime I might turn on a particular report, I may not like it, but that's what America is. It's free speech. And every time you diminish the number of voices in free speech, you diminish the opportunity for different voices to be heard. And I might add, in a county like Westchester, just to look at it at home, we have 25 municipalities. The city of Yonkers is 200,000 people with a complexity unto itself. The city of New Rochelle is 80,000 people with separate issues and complexity unto itself. The county government that represents a million people, $1.9 billion budget, is a separate entity unto itself. And there are critical issues. And there's more than enough news to satisfy as many news outlets are out there. And every time we see a news outlet potentially disappear, and particularly if the purpose is for corporate profit to reduce a cost factor, then we're damaging American democracy. And that's why you see us standing up here. As I said, many times the news outlets are not particularly complimentary over a particular thing we do. Why would we stand here and say, yes, give us greater scrutiny than, rather than lesser scrutiny? Because it's right. And at some point in time, as my colleagues have just said, we have to do what's right. And what is right is to have the largest, most extensive possible coverage of public policy, even if it's the tiny little village or the large city or the larger government beyond that. That's why we stand here today in unison. And we hope that Verizon will reconsider their decision. And Verizon is an entity that deals with public entities in lots of ways. They come before the state of New York and the Public Service Commission in order to do some of the things they do in the public interest. This is a matter of public interest. And this corporation, and every corporation, in pursuit of profit, needs to keep the public interest high in their priorities. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask my colleague, State Senator Pete Harcum, for a few words, um, Senator Carlucci and Senator Thomas, briefly, and then we'll have a spokesperson for the Assembly as well. Thank you, Senator Mayor. Thank you, Madam Leader, for your leadership and for bringing us all together today. Um, you, you've heard a lot of the reasons why this is so important and why we're here today. Um, I'll take it one step further and say this is about corporate greed. This is really about corporate greed, uh, putting, putting the bottom line before the public good. And it's an understanding in the telecom industry that you want exclusive access to run your fiber into our communities. You want to build your cell towers in our neighborhoods. You have a responsibility to invest in those communities and serve those communities. And that comes in the form of local news. This will impact my district. I represent Northern Westchester, uh, parts of Putnam, and parts of Dutchess. And it's, it's well known that when you get north of 287, it's tough to get news coverage. And I'm not even talking about me. As much as I'd love this to be about me, there's a lot of news that goes on in Northern Westchester, Putnam, and Dutchess that does not involve me. And because of the distance, you're lucky if you can get one of the news services there. So one event may have News 12, one event may have Fios. If we eliminate uh, Fios News, we are eliminating half of the coverage easily for Northern Westchester, Putnam, and Dutchess. And, and it's critical, as we've been said. You know, too many Americans now turn to get their news from sources who tell them what they want to hear. That's why a local impartial media and press is so vital to our democracy. We also see that when there's less local reporting, we have less voter involvement. So you've heard it loudly and clearly that this is about our democracy, <coughs> this is about fairness, this is about equity, it's about corporate responsibility, and most of all, it's about corporate greed. So next time someone wants to run their fiber in one of our communities and get an exclusive deal, 
next time someone wants to put up a cell tower uh, in one of our neighborhoods, we're going to remember this. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Carlucci, Senator Tom. Well, thank you. I want to thank Senator Mayer and our leader, Andrea Stura-Cousins, our county executive, George Latimer, and everyone that's here today. Again, I'm Senator David Carlucci, and very simply, I'll, I'll put it like this. Our cable news networks has, have helped to uncover corruption, uncover problems in society, problems in government. It's been said that transparency, sunlight is the best disinfectant, and that's what we need. In a time like now, as it's been said, where you have everyone that has an opinion, and with social media, that's good and accepted. But now more than ever, we need professional journalism. We need it to thrive. In addition to everyone having a say and having their voice heard, we need those experts, the people that have invested their careers and their lives, many of whom are here today, that have worked so tirelessly to educate all of us about what is going on in our community, what are our elected officials up to or not up to, how are our tax dollars being spent. All of that is involved in a healthy, thriving journalistic society and that's what we need we're urging Verizon to reverse its decision do the right thing continue to be a partner in our community and we look forward to that change thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you Senator Carlucci Senator Thomas <clears throat> thank you Senator Mayor and uh, thank you everyone I am Senator Kevin Thomas and I represent the sixth senatorial district out on Long Island and I am here to stand with Leader Cousins, Senator Mayor, and the rest of these elected officials to tell Verizon not to shut down Fios 1. Fios 1 is essential for our democracy because it informs our public. Fios 1, for example, covers everything from Superstorm Sandy to high school sports, and it keeps Long Island informed. Based off of this decision, they are now going to unemploy more than oh, more than a hundred people. These are local journalists, camera people, and support staff. In a world where journalism is labeled and attacked as fake news, and our journalists are also attacked and labeled as the enemy of the people, I stand with my colleagues today to encourage Verizon to think again, and to also encourage them to stand by their commitment to our community and to the rest of the region to provide high quality news coverage. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much. Assemblyman Steve Otis. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Shelley. I want to recognize uh, my assembly colleagues that are here Assemblyman Tom Abenanti, Assemblyman David Buckwald, Assemblyman Nader Sage and uh, the other members of our Westchester delegation, uh, Amy Paul and Gary Pretlow, Sandy Galef and Kevin Byrne, we're all very concerned about this move by Verizon. We have written a strong letter to the Verizon CEO asking them to reconsider their position. But let's talk a little about journalism and what journalism means and the importance of what we're losing here and hopefully we will have a reconsideration from Verizon. Journalists don't just come out of the sky, and we have a lot of journalists here, you didn't come out of the sky. You know the communities that you serve. And so with RNN, we have 90 journalists and 60 support staff who have been covering the communities we represent for many, many years. They know these communities. They know the officials. They know the civic groups, the not-for-profits, the events, the activities, the issues that come up. This is what we're losing. The second thing is, it's been mentioned competition, but to put a little more flavor on what competition in journalism means, if you are working for a journalistic enterprise and there's competition, you want to beat the other guy to the story. You have a little more incentive to do that investigative reporting, to get and get the story the other people don't even know about. If we go from two cable outfits covering our communities to one, we lose something in terms of competition, energy, the quality of journalism, the competition that makes journalists do a good job. As I say, my assembly colleagues and I are very upset about this. Um, Assemblyman Ambenanti is looking at some possible legislative solutions to strengthen the law 
that relates to utilities and uh, telecommunications companies and what are their civic obligations and how are they articulated in the law now and might changes be necessary. So we are on board with our colleagues in the Senate to, to continue to stay on this case, but there's an easy solution. There's a solution that actually is good for Verizon and a solution that is good for all of Westchester, Long Island, and the Hudson Valley, and that is to reconsider this decision to keep these journalists from RNN on the case, on the story, and doing a good job for the, the communities we serve. Thank you very much, Ellen. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to add one additional fact here. There's a little bit of an insinuation that the suburbs of New York City are sort of an afterthought to New York City. And for those of us who live and represent these communities, and for the national broader political debate, so much is happening in the communities outside of New York City. This is where there is incredible activity, organizing, tremendous diversity, challenges in our schools, challenges in our communities, challenges in our cities and our towns and villages. This is a place that there should be an appetite for more coverage. We are a story worth telling. And unfortunately, with this decision, Verizon is limiting that story. And it is not about us. As the county executive said, we, we are not the story. The story is the individuals we represent, the communities we represent, and the challenges they face, which are losers in this decision. And today we say to Verizon, we believe you made a mistake. Reverse your decision. Bring more sunlight, more coverage, more democracy to our communities of millions of people and let the sun shine in. So with that, is there anyone else? No? That, if there's any questions, happy to answer them. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh. I think uh, someone indicated. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> we've, uh, we've done a quick analysis of what the. F First of all, cable television is an extension of interstate broadcasting, largely subject to federal uh, legislation. Uh, but it does involve certain state interests. And therefore, the Public Service Commission has some powers to deal with what cable companies do. And if you take a look, the state has the power to deal with public health, safety, and welfare. And we believe that the public health, safety, and welfare could be imperiled if we don't continue to have what's called local news or hyper-local news. It is important that the public understand when there's a fire down the street and what the implications of that are when there's corruption in town hall and what the implications of that are, when there's a storm coming and it's going to affect a particular part of our suburban community. That's public health and safety. And we believe that we can craft some changes to state law to ensure that every cable company in the state takes its obligation to deal with the local concerns very seriously. The stumbling block is the, at the moment is to figure out what to do with those small cable companies in other parts of the state. But when you're dealing with a Verizon, when you're dealing with, a, with a, an Altice, uh, you're dealing with companies that can clearly afford to, uh, to uh, cover what's needed in the local community to ensure public health and safety are met. I'm very concerned, as the, our county executive said, that business decisions are impacting what news is being, uh, being uh, available to our public. We have, a, we have a European businessman who controls Altice. And Altice is controlling all of those outlets that Verizon is now talking about signing up with. So we're going to have a consolidation of control in the news industry, just like we're having in big business around the country. And it's the everyday working people who are going to lose because of that. Well, the problem is we don't go back in session until January. And, and we're going to have to work together uh, with the governor's office uh, and the Public Service Commission to try to devise something which passes muster with the feds and at the same time accomplishes what we need to get done. Well, first place, Verizon, as my colleagues have said, has tremendous uh, authority granted to it by the Public Service Commission for the many other things it does. As Senator Harkin said, whether it's putting in a, you know, a village agrees to allow them to put in a tower, 
whether they have an agreement with the city to be the exclusive provider of service. They're highly regulated in the public uh, sphere. This one little subset of issues that they have in terms of news coverage is sort of left off the table. They are a basically a public entity on the public airwaves. And we believe that, and I agree with uh, my colleague, Assemblyman Abenanti, they have a responsibility as a regulated company that provides news, which is an essential part of our uh, democracy, to participate fully. So we, we certainly don't step back because they have a private contract. There's, there's lots of entities that have private contracts that are regulated by the state in, in the furtherance of the public interest. And here we think that is what is needed. Yes, yeah, George, go ahead. I'm not going to the county airport. <laughs> uh, there, there's another element to, to, the, to answer the question. The judicial branch of government is set up to adjudicate these kinds of issues. And there are civil actions that happen in a court of law. And oftentimes, if a judge is so motivated by a certain action, they have the authority to freeze whatever action might be taken, either by a private entity or by a public entity. And that is an option that exists over the next 90 days. I would also say I served as a legislator with all my friends here. I've had about 20 months as an executive. Executives have some, like, unique additional authority. And we have the governor of New York, the governor of Connecticut, and the governor of New Jersey, who all have some of that unique power. And if they, can, if they choose to use some of that executive authority, that would also be leverage here. Legislatures take time to function, but governors of states can move unilaterally. So I don't think we're powerless in this situation by any means. I do think we all prefer exactly what Senator Mayer and Senator Stewart Cousins posited. Re revisit your decision, Verizon. Consider issues that are being raised about public interest and see if you can come to a different end product before you use executive or judicial authority. Anyone else? No? Any other questions? Great, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you.